My name is Kevin Fernandez and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to be learning how to play the horrifyingly monstrous game, Horrified. This one to five player game designed by Prospero Hall and published by Ravensburger. I have to give you a little bit of a friendly warning, otherwise it would just strain on my conscience. What you're about to see is one of the strangest tales ever told. Monsters coming from every corner, coming at you to try to, def to, try to kill you. You will be seeing horrors beyond your wildest dreams. Well, I did warn you. Let's go to the table and learn how to play Horrified. Unfold the game board and familiarize yourself with the locations. As you set up and play the game, instructions and components will reference these locations. Place the terror marker at the zero space of the terror level track up in the top left corner of the board. Take each monster and corresponding monster mat Place the mats in a row next to the board, as I have done, from lowest to highest. Frenzy order. The frenzy order is in the upper left corner right here. So Dracula is frenzy level one, and the creature is frenzy level four. Complete the setup for each monster in your game using the back of one of the monster mats, like so. For the creature, you place this camp token on the camp space and you place this boat token right on this black X that's labeled start, so you place it right here. And for Dracula, you place coffins in the cave, the dungeon, the graveyard, and the crypt. Then return all the unused monster mats, figures, and tokens to the box. Place the frenzy marker on the mat with the lowest frenzy order, so Dracula. Mix up the hero badges face down and give one at random to each player. Give each player their corresponding hero mover and reference card. Return the remaining badges and heroes and reference cards. So these are the remaining ones. The ones that uh, I have chosen for this demo are the professor and the inspector. The professor will go hospital and the inspector will be at the precinct. Also, I forgot to mention that, dra that uh, the creature starts at the lagoon and Dracula starts in the crypt. Shuffle the perk cards and give one at random to each player. Place the remaining perk cards in a deck face down next to the board. Place all 60 item tokens in the item token bag and mix them up. Draw 12 items from the bag and place each one at the location. Like so. And that completes the setup. We're, wait a minute. We're not really ready for our, for teaching this kind of game. You know, this is class, this is about the classic universal monsters. That's better. Black and white is always better for this stuff. So, we're now ready to fight some monsters. Horrified is a cooperative game in which all players win or lose together. The players win if they defeat all the monsters they are playing against. Each monster has a unique requirement for defeating it. For example, the creature of the Black Lagoon, you need to find the creature's hidden lair, so by placing this boat token on its lair, then drive the creature away. And for Dracula, you must find and smash all four of his coffins. 
There are more monsters and ways to defeat them in the rule book, but I'll let you discover them for yourself. The player who most recently ate garlic gets to be the first player. Each turn has two phases performed in this order. Number one is the hero phase and number two is the monster phase. During the hero phase, you take up to the number of actions indicated on your badge. You may choose to take fewer actions, may be taken multiple times. In any order, possible actions are move, move your hero along the lit path to the adjacent space. So I can move from the hospital to the church. You cannot move into water spaces. You can only cross the river using the two bridges on the board. In addition, you may make any number of villagers in your hero space with you move. Note. Monsters do not affect movement. You may move into, out of, or end your turn in a space with one or more monsters. However, this could make you more vulnerable to their attacks during the monster phase. You have guide. You can move one villager from your hero space to an adjacent space or move one villager from an adjacent space to your hero space. Villagers cannot move to water spaces and monsters do not have a do not affect their movement. So for example, I have a villager right here. If I move, if I was at the shop, I can move with the villager. Or if she was one space and I was at the theater, I can have the villager move to the theater. Special action. Some heroes have a special action as indicated on their badge, which would be right here, this little white space right here. Just like other actions, special actions count as one of the total number of actions for your turn you, and can be taken multiple times. So the professor allows, me, allows a player to move any hero or villager one space. And finally, pick up. Take any number of items from your hero space. Keep all your items in front of you next to your badge. So this was at the theater. I got to pick it up and place it by my badge. You have, there's the share ability. All heroes in the same space as your hero may freely give or take any number of items from each other. Note, sharing does not require one-to-one -one trades and does not need to, to involve you as long as all heroes are giving and taking items on your hero space. So if this hero and my hero were on the same space, I can actually give this item to the second player. Advance. At a specific location, use one of your items to advance a monster's task. Refer to the one on your monster's card. And defeat. In a monster space, use your items to defeat that monster. Note, you must complete the monster's task before you can take the action to defeat that monster. So, in order to defeat Dracula, like I said before, you need to smash his coffins. And to do that, you need to have red cards like this, red item tokens like this, that equal to six or higher. And when, you're, when the creature is backed up in its space in order to defeat him, you must use a yellow, a blue, and a red in order to defeat the creature while the ship is in the lair. Villagers may appear in the village during the monster phase. You will be directed to place the villager in a specific location. There is no limit to the number of villagers you can have on the board at one time. Each villager has a safe location they are trying to reach as indicated at the top of their figurine. So, Dr. Reed is safe is safe at the camp. You can use the move and guide actions to usher villagers to the safe location. As soon as the villager reaches the safe location, they reward you for your assistance. The current player removes the villager from the board and draws a perk card from the perk deck. Each player starts the game with a perk card and more perk cards can be earned by getting villagers to their safe locations. Keep all your perk cards face up in front of you. It is a good idea 
to discuss your perk cards and when to play them with other players. Perks may be played on any player's turn, but only during the hero phase. When you play a perk card, do what the card says and then put it in the discard pile face up. Playing a perk card does not take an action. Items are important for advancing tasks and defeating monsters as well as defending yourself from the monster's attacks. Each item has a color indicating its type and strength which is the number at the top of each item. So for example this pitchfork has the number four on it and that is its strength. Each item also has a location which indicates where the item is placed when you draw it from the bag. So if I drew one item this mop says the camp or flower so I place it in the camp. The color, strength, and location may be important when using items as shown in each monster's mat. Any number of items of the color shown may be played in a single location. Add together their strength to meet or exceed the number. When you use an item, whether to take an action or to defend against an attack, place it in a discard pile. So if I use this stake, I'd have to discard it. Unless the action tells you to place it on a monster's card, as when advancing the Invisible Man or the Wolf Man's tasks, don't return items to the bag unless specifically instructed to do so. During the monster phase, draw a card from the top of the monster deck and resolve the three parts of the card from top to bottom. After resolving the entire monster card, put it in the discard pile face up. So the first thing you need to do is the items. You draw the number of items from the top of the card. That says three, so that would be that. Then event. Each event either involves one of the monsters or the villagers. The card's color as well as the symbol above the event's name indicates who the event is about. Gray cards are about the villagers. Colored cards are about specific monsters. Refer to your reference card for the symbols. If the event monster is not in your game, completely ignore the event and continue with the monster strike. Otherwise, read the event out loud and do what it says. Certain monsters move and attack as indicated by the symbols at the bottom of the card. In order from left to right, move and attack with the first monster before proceeding to the next monster. If an indicated monster is not in your game, ignore that symbol. If the frenzy symbol is shown, the monster with the frenzy marker moves and attacks. This could result in the same monster moving and attacking twice in one turn. So for example, this says first you gotta do the wolf man. He's not in this. So you ignore that. Second, the bride. She's also not in this game, so we can't deal with that. Finally, we come to our frenzy monster, which is Dracula. He will then proceed to move one space and roll three dice, but we'll talk how that works a little later. Note, the event monster never attacks that turn unless they're frenzied. If one of those monsters is on the bottom, then move the monster the number of spaces indicated on the card. So as the card said, we move Dracula one space. If there are no people in the monster space, the monster does not attack. Do not roll the dice. If there are multiple people in that space, the monster will attack a hero rather than a villager. If there are still multiple people, the monster could attack. The current player chooses one to attack before rolling. If this symbol is rolled, the monster's power is activated once for each power symbol rolled. Refer to the exclamation mark on the monster's card. So for example, since it most likely is Dracula, that's when Dark Charm is activated. And when Dark Charm is activated, you place the current player's hero in Dracula's space. If this symbol is rolled, the person was hit by the monster's attack once for each hit symbol. That would be this symbol right here. This is the hit symbol right here. So for each one of these that you roll, 
you take a damage. To ignore being hit by a monster's attack, a hero may discard one item. For each hit symbol rolled, if the hero does not have enough items or does not wish to discard any items, they are defeated. One hit defeats a hero. When a hero is defeated, increase the terror level by one and remove the hero from the board. At the start of the player's next turn, the they place their hero at the hospital and take their turn as normal, including their full number of actions. A defeated hero does not lose any items or perk cards. Note, resolve each monster's move and attack before proceeding to the next monster. If the hero discards items to ignore an attack, they may still be defeated by a subsequent attack. If a hero is defeated, they cannot be the target of any other attacks this turn. A villager does not have any items and is therefore defeated immediately. When hit, a villager is defeated, increase the terror level by moving the terror marker one space and remove the villager from the board, like I showed you earlier. Note, the target of an attack must be stated before rolling and cannot discard items to save a villager. After completing both phases, play proceeds clockwise starting with the next player's hero phase. The game ends in one of three ways. Heroes triumph! If you defeat all the monsters, the game immediately ends and the players have won! You have saved the village from a horrific fate and perhaps even the monsters themselves. If the terror re level reaches the maximum number indicated by this skull up here at the top, the game immediately ends and the players have lost. Everyone, including the heroes, are too horrified to continue. You abandon the village to the monsters. What a jerk. If you're out of time, if you need to draw a card from the monster deck and unfortunately it's empty, the game immediately ends and the players have lost. You've taken too long to save the village. The villagers have fled and you aren't able to continue. So remember folks, if you can't beat the monster within less than 20, within, within 20 minutes or less, your next monster killing is free. The game ends only if you need to draw a card, but none remain. After resolving the last monster card, play one final hero phase to try to defeat any remaining monsters. So if it's my turn and I drew and discarded this last monster card, that means the other players or player, the second player, would be able to still take their turn even though I had already drained the monster deck. And that's all you need to know to play Horrified. If you have any questions about this game, please put them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when we release videos like this. If you're a really big fan of this channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter in my Patreon page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, if you already are a Patreon sub supporter, I want to thank you for being a current Patreon supporter. Be on the lookout for our upcoming gameplay video on the game Horrified, but until then, thanks for the views.